Hey, what's up everyone? It's Justin here and welcome to another Ask JTech episode. You guys seem to really like this series, so I thought I'd give back to you guys by doing a giveaway, and this is brought to you by Logitech. So if you would like to have a chance to win the Ultimate Ears Mega Boom Limited Edition Shockwave Speaker, be sure to check the details in the description section below, and I will also be talking about more near the end of this video. But without further ado, I'm going to jump to the first question, which I'm just going to answer right away. And this wasn't really a question that was asked by you guys, but one that was left in the comments of the last video, and that is, why am I wearing a vest indoors? And the answer to that is, I live in Canada, the office is in a basement, it's relatively cold, and besides, I just bought this vest and I really like it, so as you can probably tell by now, in just the last two videos, I'm going to be wearing this quite a bit. The first question is, what is your least favorite part of being a tech reviewer in Canada? And a lot of you may not know this, some of you definitely do. I live in Canada and I live on a small island, Victoria, BC, so the challenge of running a business or a YouTube channel in the tech industry is not only a challenge, the fact that I'm living in Canada, but that I'm on an island as well. And products tend to do take longer to arrive to me and the currency right now is also really weak and I tend to be buying a lot of stuff from the US. But I have to say, compared to a few years ago when I first started YouTube, it is definitely much better. Items are arriving faster, shipping is cheaper, and more manufacturers have kind of had it figured out. As when I first started, companies were really hesitant to work with YouTubers in Canada, and it seemed to be a pretty big drawback. But by all means, it is doable. But even with that, I really want to move to the US one day, hopefully after I finish university. The second question comes from Kazir and he asks, do you stay up to date with rumors or you like surprises? So as a tech reviewer, obviously it is really hard to not find out about a device and its details before it has been officially announced. I have to say though, compared to a few years ago where I was always on the rumors and making videos about leaks and all that stuff, now I kind of just see what I see on EvLeaks for example, but other than that, I don't really research into the details. I kind of just wait until the product is released and that's probably because there is just so much being talked about, rumors flying around everywhere and many of them do end up being true, but I kind of stopped bothering to keep up with the rumors. But I can't really say I like surprises either as I'm always eager to find out about stuff as soon as the information is readily available. Staying on the topic of rumors, Mitchell Sanders asks, do you think the iPhone 7 with the rumored loss of headphone jack will still be worth the purchase still? So I'm an iPhone user and I'm using one right now obviously. It has been my daily driver. I love using the iPhone. And aside from its really bad battery life, which by the way, I fixed the issue with the Apple battery case, it is a great phone and it lets me get my job done and it has served me very well. Obviously there are rumors going around with Apple making another big step in terms of its ports, um, the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack being eliminated. I have to say I don't really use the headphone jack a lot. I like to use the aux cord in my car, but a lot of times I just use the lightning port for audio. But I have to say a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack is something that is still good to have as you're always not going to have an adapter with you. And more often than not, I even forget the adapter for my 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on the Apple battery case. So I don't necessarily think it's a good thing and I don't like it, but I guess we're gonna have to get used to it. Just like the MacBook 12 inch, which I still forget the adapter for all the time when I'm traveling. Next up, eTech asks, do you think it's too late to start a tech channel with all the people already doing tech videos? So I always encourage people to start at a young age. I started at age 13 and it was obviously a huge learning process as when you're 13, you're not the smartest person on earth and you're kind of experimenting. So for the first few years, I kind of just had fun with YouTube and at the time the industry wasn't really busy at all. There weren't that many people making videos. Obviously some people who still make videos today were around including John Four Lakers, TLD Today, Michael Panetta, Soldier Knows Best. Detroit Borg, and those are all people I watched and looked up to. But today there's just so many people making YouTube videos, and I would say it is a very competitive space. That being said, there are many more resources that people have access to nowadays, and brands are more than willing to support YouTubers more than ever before. So I wouldn't really discourage anyone from starting a YouTube channel, but 
I will say it is a very busy space and my tip is to try to stay unique as I'm personally still trying to do as often as possible. So that pretty much wraps it up for this week's Ask JTech episode. And as always, if you'd like to ask any more questions, be sure to tweet me as that is the best way for me to see it using the hashtag Ask JTech if you would like to be in the next episode. Other than that, I also want to give you guys some of the details of the giveaway. It is sponsored by Ultimate Ears and they have very kindly provided the UE Mega Boom speaker, which I did a review on and it is a great speaker. And it looks even better in its Shockwave edition, which is the limited edition color. I be Puerto Rican, they parade floating. That Benz Marina did a raid coasting. She be Puerto Rican, they parade waving. Last month I helped her with the car payment. The details to enter are in the description section. It's really simple. Just go to the Gleam link and follow the steps there to get your official entries in. And I will be randomly selecting a winner on March 4th, which is a Friday, and letting you guys know who the winner is on Twitter. Other than that, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button and I'll see you all in the next one.